young and alone on a long road. Once I lost my way. Rich I felt when I found another. Man rejoices in man. A kind word need not cost much. The price of praise to be cheap. With half a loaf and an empty cup, I found myself a friend. Two wooden stakes stood on the plain. On them I hung my clothes. Draped in linen, they looked well born, but naked I was a nobody. Too early to many homes I came. Too late it seemed to some. The ale was finished, or else some brewed. The unpopular cannot please. Some would invite me to visit their homes, but none thought I needed a meal. As though I had eaten a whole jolt just before, with a friend who had two. The man who stands at a strange threshold should be cautious before he crosses. Glance this way and that, who knows beforehand what foes may sit, awaiting him in the hall. Greetings to the host, the guest that arrived, in which seat shall he sit? Rash is he, who at unknown doors relies on his good luck. Fire is needed by the newcomer, whose knees are frozen down. Meat and clean linen a man needs who is fed across the fells. Water too, that he may wash before eating. Hand gloves and a hearty welcome. Courteous words and courteous silence that he may tell his tale. Who travels widely, needs his wits about him. The stupid should stay at home. The ignorant man is often laughed at when he sits at the meat of the sage. Of his knowledge, a man should never boast. Rather be sparing of speech. When to his house a wiser comes, seldom do those who are silent make mistakes, while the wit is ever a faithful friend. A guest should be courteous when he comes to the table, and sit in wary silence, his ears attentive, his eyes alert, so he protects himself. Fortunate is he who is favored in his lifetime with praise and words of wisdom. Evil counsel is often given him by those of evil heart. Blessed is he in his own lifetime has awarded praise and wit, for ill counsel is often given by mortal men to each other. Better gear than good sense a traveler cannot carry, better than riches for a wretched man far from his own home. Better gear than good sense a traveler cannot carry, a more tedious burden than too much drink a traveler cannot carry. Less good than belief would have it, is mean to the sons of men. A man knows less the more he drinks, becomes a befuddled fool. I forget, is the day men give the heron, who hovers over the fast. Fettered I was, in his feathers that night, when a guest in good lord's call. Drunk I got, dead drunk, when Fiona the wise was with me. Best is the banquet, what looks back on after, and remembers all that happened. Silence becomes the son of a prince to be silent but brave in battle. It befits a man to be merry and glad until the day of death. The coward believes he will live forever if he goes back in the battle. But in old age he shall have no peace, no spears have spared his limbs. When he meets friends, the fool gapes, is shy and sheepish at first. Then he sips his mead and immediately all know what an oath he is. He who has seen and suffered much and knows the ways of the world, who has traveled can tell what spirit governs the men he meets. Drink your mead, but in moderation, talk sense or be silent. No man is called discourteous who goes to bed at an early hour. A gluttonous man who guzzles away brings sorrow on himself. At the table of the wise he is taunted often, mocked for his bloated belly. The herd knows it's homing time and leaves a grazing ground, but the glut never knows how much his belly is able to hold. An ill-tempered, unhappy man ridicules all he hears, makes fun of others, refusing always to see the faults of himself. Foolish is he who threats at night and lies awake to worry. A weary man, when morning comes, all is as bad as before. The fool who thinks that those who laugh kill are all his friends, unaware when he sits with wiser men how ill they speak of him. The fool who thinks that those who laugh hither are all his friends, when he comes to the thing and calls for support, few spokesmen he finds. The fool who fancies he is full of wisdom while he sits by his hearth at home, 
quickly finds when questioned by others that he knows nothing at all. The ignorant will be hit best to be silent when he moves among other men. No one will know what iniquity is until he begins to talk. No one knows less what iniquity is than a man who talks too much. To ask well, to answer rightly, the marks of a wise man. Men must speak of men's deeds. What happens may not be hidden. Wise is he not who is never silent, mouthing meaningless words. A glib tongue that goes on chattering sings to its own harm. A man among friends should not mock another. Many believe the man who is not questioned to know much, and so he escapes their scorn. An early meal a man should take before he visits friends, lest when he gets there he go hungry, afraid to ask for food. The fastest friends may fall out when they sit at the banquet board. It is and shall be a shameful thing when guest quarrels with guest. The wise guest has his way of dealing with those who talk to him at table. He smiles to the meal not seeming to hear the twaddle talk by his foes. The tactful guest will take his leave early, not linger long. He starts to stink while well, stays as welcome in a hall that is not his own. A small hut of one's own is better. A man is his master at home. A couple of goats and a corded roof still are better than begging. A small hut of one's own is better. A man is his master at home. His heart bleeds, and the beggar who must ask at each meal for meat. A wayfarer should not walk unarmed, but carry his weapons to hand. He knows not when he may need a spear, or what menace meet on the road. No man is so generous he will jib at accepting a gift in return for a gift. No man so rich that it really gives him pain to be repaid. Once he has won wealth enough, a man should not pray for more. When he says for friends, foes may take, hopes are often liars. With presents, friends should please each other with a shield or a costly coat. Mutual giving makes for friendship so long as life goes well. A man should be loyal through life to friends, to them and to friends of theirs. But never shall a man make offer of friendship to his foes. A man should be loyal through life to friends in return, gift for gift. Laugh when they laugh, but with lies repay a false foe who lies. If you find a friend you fully trust and wish for his will, exchange thoughts, exchange gifts, go often to his house. If you deal with another you don't trust but wish for his goodwill, be fair in speech but false in thought and give him lie for lie. Even with one you ill trust and doubt what he means to do, false words with fair smiles may get you the gift you desire. To a false friend the footpath winds to his house beyond the highway. To a sure friend there is a shortcut though he live a long way off. Harder than fire among false hearts burns friendship four or five days, suddenly slackens when the six dawns feeble their friendship then. The generous and bold live the best lives are seldom beset by cares, but the base man sees boogies everywhere and the visor pines for presents. The young fur that falls and rots having neither needles nor bark, so is the fate of the friendless man, why should he live long? Little a sand grain, little a dewdrop, little the minds of men. All men are not equal in wisdom, the half-wise are everywhere. It is best for man to be middle-wise, not for cunning and clever. The fairest life is led by those who are deaf in all they do. It is best for man to be middle-wise, not for cunning and clever. No man is able to know his future, so let him sleep in peace. It is best for man to be middle-wise, not for cunning and clever. The learned man whose lore is deep is seldom happy at heart. Brand kindles brand till they burn out. Flame is quickened by flame. One man from another is known by his speech, the simpleton by his silence. Early shall he rise who has designs on another's land or life. His prey escapes the prologue. The sleeper is seldom victorious. Early shall he rise who rules for servants and set to work at once. Much is lost by the late sleeper, wealth is won by the swift. A man should know how many logs and strips of bark from the birch, to stock in autumn that he may have enough wood for his winter fires. Who washed and fed what may fare to the thing that was clothes be the worse for wear. None need be ashamed of his shoes and hose, nor of the horse he owns, although no thoroughbred. As the eagle who comes to the ocean shore sniffs and hangs her head, dumbfounded is he who finds it a thing no supporters to plead his case. It is safe to tell the secret to one, risky to tell it to two. 
To tell it to three is thought as folly. Everyone else will know. Often words unto to another have reaped an ill harvest. To be one, the tongue is held vain. Pockets of fur hide fists. Moderate of counsel should a man be, not brutal nor overbearing. Among the bold, the bold will find others as bold as he. These things are thought the best. Fire, the sight of the sun, good health with a gift to keep it, and a light that avoids vice. Not all sick men are utterly wretched. Some are blessed with sons, some with friends, some with riches, some with worthy works. The halt can manage a horse, the handless a flock, the deaf will be a doughty fighter. To be blind is better than to burn on a pyre. There is nothing the dead can do. It is always better to be alive. The living can keep a cow. Fire, I saw, warming a wealthy man with a cold corpse at his door. A son is a blessing, though born late, to a father no longer alive. Stones that seldom stand by the highway of sons not set them there. He is fortunate who has enough provisions, sure to the sails of the ship, dangerous to dark and order. The wind may veer within five days and many times in a month. The half wind does not know that gold makes apes of many men. One is rich, one is poor, there is no blame in that. Cattle die, kindred die, every man is mortal. But the good name never dies of one who has done well. Cattle die, kindred die, every man is mortal. But I know one thing that never dies, the glory of the great dead. Fields and flocks have fit young sons who now carry begging bowls. Wealth may vanish in the wink of an eye. Gold is the falsest of friends. And the fool who acquires cattle and lands or wins a woman's love. His wisdom wanes with his waxing pride. He sinks from sense to conceit. Now is answered what you ask of the runes, graven by the gods, made by the old father, sent by the powerful sage. It is best to remain silent. For these things give thanks at nightfall. The day gone, a gutted torch, a sword tested, the trough of a maid, ice crossed, ale drunk. Hew wood at wind time and find where the sail. Tell in the night time tales to house girls, for too many eyes are open by day. From a ship expect speed, from a shield cover, keen as from a sword, but a kiss from a girl. Drink ale by the hearth, over ice glide, by a stained sword, by a starving bear, to fatten at home and fatten the watchdog. Trust on an acre early sown, no praise a son too soon. Whether it was an acre with the sun, both are exposed to peril. A snapping bow, a burning flame, a grinning wolf, a grunting boar, a raucous troll, a roomless tree, a breaking wave, a boiling kettle, a flying arrow, an ebbing tide, a coiled adder, the ice of the night, a bride's bed talk, a drawn sword, a bear's play, a prince's children, a witch's welcome, the wit of a slave, a sick calf, a corpse still fresh, a brother's killer, a capital on the highway, a house half burned, a race who stounded who has drenched the leg, or never a safe, that no man trusts them. That no man should trust the maiden's words, though what a woman speaks. Spun on a wheel where women's hearts in their breasts was implanted in Greece. To love a woman whose ways are false is like sledding over slippery ice. With unshot horses out of control, badly trained two year olds, or drifting rudderless on a rough sea, or catching a rain ear with a crippled hand on a thawing hillside, think not to do it. Nay, can I speak now, for I know both men are treacherous too. Fairest we speak, when falsest we think, many a maid is deceived. Gallantly shall he speak, and gifts bring who wishes for woman's love. Praise the features of the fair girl, he who courts well will conquer. Never reproach another for his love, it happens often enough. The beauty ensnares with desire the wise, when the foolish remain unmoved. Never approach the plight of another, it happens to many men. Strong desire may stupefy heroes, dull the wits of the wise. The mind alone knows what is near the heart, each is his own judge. The worst sickness for a wise man is to crave what he cannot enjoy. So I learned when I sat in the reeds, hoping to have my desire. Lovely was the flesh of that fair girl, but nothing I hoped for happened. I saw in a bed the village daughter, sun white to sleep. No greater delight I longed for then than to lie in her lovely arms. Come, 
on board have been packed at nightfall if you wish for a meeting with me. All would be lost if anyone saw us and learned that we were lovers. A fireless longing I left to then deceive by your soft words. I thought my wooing had won the maid that I would have my way. After nightfall I hurried back. The warriors were all awake. Lights were burning, blazing torches. So false proved the path. Towards daybreak back I came. The guards were sound asleep. I found them that the fair woman had tied a bitch to her bed. Many a girl, when one gets to know her, proves to be fickle and false. The treacherous maiden taught me a lesson. The crafty woman covered me with shame. That was all I got from her. Let a man with his guests be glad and merry. Modest the man should be. But talk well if he intends to be wise and expects praise from men. Feeble Bombi is the fool called, unable to open his mouth. Fruitless my errand had I been silent when I came to Sutton's courts. With spirit and words I spoke to my prophet in the hall of the aged giant. Rati had gnawed a narrow passage, chewed a shadow for stone. A path around the roads of giants, I was like to lose my head. Good Lord sat me in the golden sea, poured me precious mead. The reward she had for me for that, for a proud and passionate heart, a brooding, foreboding spirit. What I have won from her, I have no use. I have waxed the wisdom since I came back, bringing to Asgard, already the sacred draft. Hardly would I have come home alive from the goth of the Grim Troll, and could not help me the good woman who wrapped her arms around me. The following day, the frost giants came, walked into Hara's hall to ask for Hara's advice. Had Bulver if they asked, come back to his friends where he been slain by Sutum. Oh, then they said, swore an oath on his ring, who from now on will trust him. By fraud of the beast, he befuddled Sutum and brought grief to Gunlord. It is time to sing in the seat of the wise of what it endures well. I saw in silence, saw and thought on long, I listened to men. Runes had spoken, counsels revealed. At Hans Hall, in Hans Hall, there I heard this. Lord Fafnir, listen to my counsel. You will fare well if you follow it. You will have luck if you heed it. Never rise in the night unless you need to spy or ease yourself in the outhouse. Shun a woman wise in magic, her men and her embraces. If she casts a spell, you will care no longer to meet and speak with men. Desire no food, desire no pleasure, and sorrow fall asleep. Never seduce another man's wife, never make your mistress. If you must journey to mountains and firths, take food and fodder with you. Never open your heart to an evil man when fortune doesn't favor you with an evil man. If you make him your friend, you will get evil for good. I saw a warrior wounded faintly by the words of an evil woman. Her cunning tongue caused his death, for what she alleged was a lie. If you know a friend you fully trust, go often to his house. Grass and brambles grow quickly upon the untrodden track. With a good man, it is good to talk. Make him your fast friend, but waste the words with a witless oaf. Or sit with a senseless ape. Cherish those near you, never be the first to break them, friend. Care is him who can no longer open his heart to another. An evil man, if you make him a friend, will give you evil for good. A good man, if you make him a friend, will praise you in every place. Affection is mutual when men can open all their hearts to another. He whose words are always fair is untrue and not to be trusted. Bandy no speech with a bad man, often the better is beaten. In a word, fight by the worse. Be not a cop than a copper of shafts, lest it be for yourself. If a shoe be ill or a shaft be crooked, the maker gets curses and kicks. If aware that another is wicked, say so. Make no truce or treaty with foes. Never share the shamefully gotten, but allow yourself as lawful. Never lift your eyes and look up in battle, lest the heroes enchant you, who could change warriors suddenly into hogs. With a good woman, if you wish to enjoy her words and her goodwill, pledge your fairly and be faithful to it. Enjoy the good you have given. Be not overwary, but wary enough. First to the foaming ale, second of a woman went to another, third the tricks of thieves. Mock not the traveler met on the road, nor maliciously laugh at the guest. Scoff not a guest, nor to the gate chase them, but believe the lonely and wretched. The sin is in the hall, seldom know the kin of the newcomer. The best man is marred by faults, the worst is not what I'm worth. Never laugh at the old when they offer counsel, often their words are wise. From shriveled skin, from scraggy things, I hand among the hides, and move amid the guts. Clear words often come, 
Bury the beam above the door. Hang a horseshoe on it. Get still luck. Lest it should suddenly crash and crush your guests. Medicines exist against many evils. Earth against drunkenness. Heather against worms. Oak against costiveness. Corn against sorcery. Spurred rye against rupture. Runes against bales. The moon against feuds. Fire against sickness. Earth makes harmless the bloods. Bait ek. Antic ek. Vinga me the oar. Nate aladiu. Gere under the oak. Shulvan, Shulvan men, oh, they made the Elmang event, hence a broken thread. With Levi, Mixel, Levi for Edi, Nusta, Ek, Neither, Nam, Ek, Up, Runar, Urpandanam, Fel, Ek, Up, the Far. Nine lays of power I learned from the famous Pope. He poured me a draft of precious mead mixed with magic old Wax and throw well, word from word gave words to me. Deed from deed gave deeds to me. Runes you will find and read of staves, very strong staves, very stout staves, staves that bore staves, made by mighty powers, created by prophetic God. For the gods by Odin, for the elves by thine, by Planetu for the dwarves, by us, fit for the hateful giants, and some I call for myself. Fund before man was made, scratch them, Ulro's first fell thereafter. Needful for men to know, a needful for trolls to know. 
Hail to the speaker, hail to the knower, joy to him who has understood, delight to those who have listened, hail Odin!